Okay, this is a video on molecular structure and strength in terms of acids. And you're going to love this video. Why? Because it's easy to understand. At least I think so anyway. And it's really short. So, molecular structure and acid strength. This represents what we have talked about in the past as a binary acid. If you recall, binary acids contain hydrogen like all acids do that we are aware of so far and another element which in this case is called X and of course when HX is dissolved in water if it's going to act like an acid it's going to donate protons right and we're going to get the X minus so what determines the strength of an acid say like HF HCl HBr and HI if, as we look at these different binary acids, and we can see that the element that is not hydrogen is in the same group on the periodic table in this case, how do we know which one of these is the strongest, which one of these is the weakest? Can we put them in order from strongest to weakest or weakest to strongest depending upon what we do? Is there a way we can figure it out? Well, there is a pretty simple way, and it deals with bond strength. We would think, we would hope anyway, or we might think that because fluorine is the most electronegative and then chlorine and then bromine and then finally iodine, the least electronegative, that the strength of the acid might be dependent upon the electronegativity of the non-hydrogen element because remember the more electronegative it is the more polar this bond is going to be so F being the most electronegative this bond is the most polar and I being the least electronegative that bond is the least polar but it turns out it's not a matter of polarity when it comes to these binary acids it's a matter of the strength of the bond the bond enthalpy remember is the energy required to in kilojoules of course to break one mole of, of those bonds we see that the H to F bond is actually the strongest bond, therefore making it the weakest acid. As we go down the chart, the bond enthalpy gets less and less. Therefore, the strength of the acid is increasing. So, my friends, the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid. The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. HI has the weakest bond because its bond enthalpy is the least value and therefore it's the strongest acid and then HBr is the next weakest bond it's the next strongest acid and then HCl finally the least strongest acid of these three and of course because HF's bond LP is pretty large it ends up being a weak acid not a strong acid so the order is HF is very very weak compared to HCl which is weaker than HBr, which is weaker than HI. And we can look in the periodic table and see that the strength of the acid increases as we go down this group. So, as we were saying, the strength of the acid, whoops, the strength of the acid increases as we go down the group of the halogens. And so, molecular structure and acid strength for binary acids is completely and totally dependent upon the strength of the bond which could be measured by the bond enthalpy. When it comes to molecular structure and acids for oxoacids, remember an oxoacid has an element here which we call, we'll call just Z as the symbol, and it has an O there and an H there, and the O is bonded to the central atom, and then the H is bonded to the O, and the O is more slightly or slightly negative, and the H is slightly positive, and this bond is polar. And then, of course, this is the proton that gets donated when it behaves like an acid, leaving us its conjugate base in the acid. Here's a bunch of different ones. Carbonic acid, nitrous acid, nitric acid, which you've used before, phosphoric acid, which you've used before, but it was a while back. Or maybe you're going to be using it again. I'm sorry, that's phosphorous acid. Phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid, which, of course, you have used. And as you can see, they all have the central atom with atoms bonded to it. 
and any of those protons that are that can be donated are attached to oxygen atoms. See the hydrogen is attached to an oxygen atom, the hydrogen is attached to the oxygen atom, and so on and so forth for all of these molecules. So how does structured determine acid strength? Well, the O to H bond <coughs> excuse me, will be more polar and will be easier to remove that proton if the following is true. Z is very electronegative or Z has a high oxidation state. In other words, the more polar that this bond is, the stronger that acid is going to be because it's going to be easier to remove that proton from the acid. So, the more polar this bond is, the stronger the acid is going to be. This will be the case if Z here is, is a very electronegative element or if Z has a high oxidation state. Now actually we're going to look at these two in two separate situations. Okay, So this will be situation one, this will be situation two. So oxo acids having a different central atom Z that are from the same group and have the same oxidation number, it's going to be based upon the electronegativity. So we see this element, this molecule, this acid, we see this acid. We see that they're very similar. They both have three oxygen atoms. All right? They both have one hydrogen bonded to one of the oxygen atoms. The only difference is, is that this is Cl and this is Br. So basically this Cl and this Br have the same oxidation number. We can tell because they have the same number of oxygens bonded to it. The more the oxygens are bonded to it, the greater the oxidation number, and the fewer the oxygens are bonded to it, the lesser the oxidation number. So since they have the same number of oxygens, they have the same electronegativity. So which acid is stronger? Well, this is that Z, and Cl is more electronegative than Br, so HClO3 should be a stronger acid than HBrO3 because it's more electronegative, higher electronegativity, which means it's going to make this bond more polar. Cl is more electronegative than Br, as we said, and HClO3 should be stronger than HBrO3. And again, we're comparing two elements that are, are Z in the same group, so that they have the same oxidation number, and what we do is compare the electronegativities. In the case, though, in which Z is a different element, okay, but, or sorry, the same element, excuse me, the same element, but we have different number of oxygens bonded to it, the acid strength increases as the oxidation number increases. So, for example, here's our Z, and it has one oxygen bonded to it. Here's our Z, and it has two oxygens bonded to it. Here's our Z, and it has three oxygens bonded to it. And here's our Z again, and now it has four. So the more oxygens we have bonded to it, the higher the oxidation number is going to be for that atom. The higher that oxidation number is, the stronger the acid is going to be. So the perchloric acid should be the strongest, then the chloric acid should be the next strongest, then chlorous acid, and then hypochlorous acid. And again, if the atom Z is the same, right? So we're comparing four different acids in which that central atom is the same in all cases. The difference is, is the number of oxygens bonded to that central atom, which is going to affect the oxidation number. The more oxygens there are, the greater the oxidation number, and the stronger the acid is going to be. And that's the end of this video. And there's the order of the strength. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye.